Hey guys, it's Danica and today in this video I'm partnering with Kent Building Supplies here in Atlanta, Canada and I'm going to show you how to build an island in a day. Yeah, it's just that simple. And you'll end up with this one or probably something even cooler if you want to go a bit more custom. So let's follow along. I promise it's extremely beginner friendly. You will start your island build by laying it out on the ground. Typically, islands are 30 inches from other cupboards, but I like to give it about 36 inches of room. That way, two people can pass through easily, and if it's anything like my house, there's going to be a lot of people in the kitchen at all times. Once I put the tape on the ground and I made sure that it was all square, I moved the cupboards into the grid. This is where you're really able to plan out your island, and you can lay them out in many unique ways, especially if you have a bit more room than I do. I am just going to be keeping it super simple to give you the idea, but don't be afraid to build it longer, wider, or even L-shaped, however you see fit in your kitchen. Then when you have your bases set up and you like them the way they are, you can measure the back, the length, and the width, and cut the pieces to size with 3 quarter inch birch plywood. That's what's going to be holding it all together. A little tip if you're thinking, okay, I don't have a table saw or even a circular saw. The only tool you really need for this project is a drill because Kent Building Supplies offers a cut shop where they can actually cut these pieces for you. You let them know you want three quarter inch birch cabinet grade plywood at your length and your width. Then you can just pick it up, bring it home and put it all together so you don't even need to make cuts. Then I got my clamps out and my adhesives and I put the glue on the backs of the cabinets where you see the shaker style outline. This is the thickest part of your cabinet and you can screw into it. I pin nailed some of it and I clamped it but then I added some screws really close to the side because I'm actually going to be using MDF trim as corner pieces just to make it a bit more decorative and it hides the screws. You can also measure the sides and do the same thing but it's not necessary if you're adding a corner because the cabinets you get from Kent are already finished on both sides, so why waste material going over it? The height of my island is 35, so I cut four pieces of trim to that length and glued and nailed them on. This is just a nice detail in the corners and it hides the rough cut plywood and the screw holes, so it's a win-win. And like I said before, if you give Kent the dimensions of your trim, they'll also cut that for you as well. Still keep your clamps on for a full 24 hour period until your PL premium dries. That way the entire island is one solid piece and then fill any of the tiny nail holes with wood fill. As the glue sets, it'll become super sturdy and you can move it around. I left it all to dry and I got out the pre-made butcher block from Kent. It's a solid hardwood and they sell them in different sizes. I got two and I glued them together. You can use the biscuit joiner here. I didn't have any biscuits, and since I'm keeping it super simple, like I said, I think the key is that if you don't use biscuits, just make sure your seam is not what's being overhung. So the seam is in the middle of the cabinets. That way, it has something to hold. So basically, I'm going to overhang the solid piece, and then my joint will sit on the cabinets, and there's less stress where it's glued together. I use clamps and I set it overnight, but if you don't have clamps, you can just glue it and screw it. Try not to touch it for 24 hours and it will be secure. I primed the cupboards with bin 123 primer and then I painted the base black. The cupboards didn't come with any pre-drilled holes because they actually have a little dip that's meant for the poles so that they're super sleek but it's just as easy to drill some holes and put in some cabinet hardware. I love a bold piece of hardware. I just think it brings the entire piece together. So I picked up these bronzy gold. I know they're called brush nickel, but I just assume nickel is silver. So we're gonna call them gold. I actually picked up enough to use them on the entire kitchen because the ones that were here when I bought the house are extremely dated. You also don't have to do the overhang option if you just wanted a standalone island that you don't sit at. They do offer pieces that are a bit wider that you don't even have to glue it together. Bring it home and put it on. Again, I am doing a very basic way to show you how to build this island. I'm leaving it pretty plain and simple, but I have seen some seriously cool geometric island ideas, some shiplap pieces. So if you're feeling bold, spruce it up. This is just to give you the overall idea of how you can build this island for your home in just a day. 
Now, when I found the butcher block in Kent, I absolutely loved the color, but since I was putting two pieces together, I did wood fill the spots and I had to sand it off. But by sanding it off, I realized how easily the gray stain comes off. If you bring it home, you like the gray and you put a clear coat on, it won't come off. But before you clear coat it, if you do wanna change the color, it took me about 10 minutes to sand off the stain. And it was this beautiful wood that had so many depths of colors and I'm obsessed with it. So I sanded off the gray and then I clear coated it and my butcher block was ready to go. Thanks for watching guys. I really hope you loved this DIY island build. I kept it very beginner friendly and I wanted people not to be scared and think that an island is too big of a project to tackle, whether you're in an apartment or you don't have the proper tools that you thought you needed. Just to let you know that you can use the cut shop at Kent and you can build almost anything. They will cut it all to size. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time. Happy DIYing.